uh, revolutionary greetings comrades it's third day of uh, the Kosato Congress Galaga Estate in Houten. You will know that uh, in one of the videos we did analyze the uh, outcome of the policy conference of the African National Congress on the issues of migration. Uh, a number of proposals were made which are going to be tabled at the ANC elective conference in December. Uh, if you you have forgotten about those. I will not summarize again, but please refer to the video in the YouTube channel so that you can connect with what uh, we are discussing today. Uh, today, in the Cosato Congress, uh, among us others, we'll be discussing the international report. Um, what we also want to do then uh, in this video is to discuss the summary uh, which was done, a summer report uh, which was done by the COSATO International Department in preparation for this Congress, particularly on the issues of migration. As I'm saying that we dealt with the policy proposal of the African National Congress on the question of migration. Uh, and uh, COSATO then contracted the Christian Institute uh, to assist uh, in dealing with this question so that the Kosato Congress can discuss and they come up with a policy paper or a policy position on migrant labor in South Africa. We have said previously that uh, uh, migrant labor did not start today and uh, that uh, workers of migrant origin and the workers of South African origin are not different from each other. We are all workers and were victims of the capitalist system. Uh, this is one of the reasons why, as the Zimbabwe community in South Africa, we never thought it was necessary for us to approach the courts in South Africa over the non-renewal of the Zimbabwe exemption payments, because uh, we believe that uh, we need to engage with our comrades, uh, because, uh, as you know, uh, Karl Marx says, workers of the world unite. You have nothing to lose but your chains. And uh, indeed, we are separated by the colonial borders. And we are victims of the capitalist system. So the executive summary of COSATO uh, made the following proposals. As I have said, I will be very, very brief. Then we'll continue to discuss uh, the COSATO uh, labor, uh, the migration labor policy uh, as it is going, going to be adopted. So we'll do so after the Congress when it has been adopted so that at least we know the position of COSATO uh, on, on its position on the, on the migration policy or migrant workers. We also know that the Department of Labor and Employment uh, produced a draft uh, policy document on labor migration in South Africa. And uh, we have discussed that as well in this YouTube channel. Please refer to the uh, video if uh, you might have missed. So I, I will quote here, it says, the proposed policy position includes the following critical provisions. One, Migration is an ongoing reality. Two, migrant workers are workers that are entitled to all labor law protections. Three, migrant workers must be organized by trade unions within their sectors. Four, workplace based social protection must cover labor migrants. Five, information must be made accessible for labor migrants. Six, Quotas are a possible mechanism to regulate labor migration that must be implemented responsibly. Seven, women migrants must be protected. Uh, I will pause, uh, particularly on this question on, on, on women migrants. Uh, we were discussing with the comrades uh, in this Congress and what we are establishing 
is that uh, there is no trade union that organizes domestic workers. Uh, while Tsatsau is there, it is not yet an affiliate of COSAT. Uh, and we are talking to comrades who are not, who are not sure what uh, would be the outcome, whether uh, to build Tsatsau and assist it to go through the legal processes for it to be an affiliate of COSATU, whether the comrades uh, in the ongoing discussions will uh, want to have an alternative trade, trade union that organizes labor, uh, uh, domestic workers. Uh, we have discussed this question that uh, Domestic workers in the main are abused. They work for long hours, 15 hours a day or more, particularly those that uh, are uh, doing what is called to stay in. That is, that is the employer providing accommodation. Uh, they have no off days, even if we are said to be off. Most of them, they'll be asked to do some work in the morning, an hour or two, and they are expected to be back in the at the station or in the work at the workplace, which is their residence, by the end of the day. No visitors are allowed in most cases. If you are stay in, most cases will not have someone coming to visit you. Uh, maybe to stay overnight a relative a boyfriend or a girlfriend so uh, it's a it's a a sector that uh, employs many women who have been abused and most of them are not registered with the uif uh, so this this is an area that uh, we must indeed pay particular attention. And the majority of the holders of Zimbabwe exemption permits uh, workers, domestic workers. Uh, we have many women from the Satak region that work in this sector. From Mozambique, from Lesotho, from Eswatin. And they remain unorganized. So it's an area which we must pay particular attention so that we protect these vulnerable workers. Let me continue here. Eight, Mi migrants in an, irregular, in an irregular situation are also workers. Nine, xenophobia is categorically condemned. Ten, South Africa is not an island and must play a role in the region and continent to ensure worker rights everywhere. Uh, close quote. So that's, that's the summary. Uh, uh, of the uh, that's executive summary of uh, the Cosato migration policy draft for the Congress. Uh, we will deal with the, the other issues, uh, but I saw a court which I thought uh, uh, I, I needed to uh, do. But before I get to that court, let's just uh, read the definition of migration as explained in this document. Migration in simple terms refers to the movement of people from one place to another and it can take place across international borders or internally within the borders of a country. People migrate for numerous reasons, including in search of a better life and greater access to opportunities to earn a living, to escape persecution as a result of conflict or natural disasters. Frequently, it is a combination of these factors or what is referred to as mixed migration that drives people to leave the country of their birth and to set in a new home, one that can often be hostile rather than will come into their presence. Uh, people do not, uh, in the main, necessarily leave their countries or their districts or regions or provinces 
that is the internal migration, uh, they do so because they are forced by circumstances, either they are looking for a better life or for other reasons. Uh, and uh, it will then be wrong to blame uh, the workers. Uh, there is a quote here in this document. This, this is the police document. Uh, is a draft uh, police document of COSATO uh, that it delegates uh, to the Congress are discussing. Uh, there's a quote here which is interesting from Zatau, which is something that uh, we have raised and discussed that uh, one of the things that we must do when we discuss the reunion agenda is that uh, we must industrialize the entire SATAC region to an extent that uh, we workers are paid the same salary across the SATAC region as part of building unit within the African continent. And uh, the reason why migration is one way, which then the Minister of Labor and Employment uh, says uh, it's a labor distortion. It's, it's a, as a result of different salary scales that are paid or wages that are paid across our region. People of the same profession in the region get different salaries. And this is informed by the economies of each country in the region. So there is need to uh, industrialize the entire SATAC region. Uh, so that uh, a truck driver in Malawi gets the same salary like a truck driver working in South Africa or in Lesotho, a teacher in Zambia gets paid the same salary like a teacher working in Mozambique or in Angola. Then you will not have migration one way. Then you can have even a South African, as we have argued before, can go and live in Lilongwe if maybe they want uh, uh, if the weather uh, is conducive for them in the long run, not because uh, uh, they, want, they want to earn a, a higher salary, uh, but because uh, if you're a teacher working in Johannesburg and teacher working in the long run, earn the same salary, uh, it means uh, one can uh, relocate based on the weather of a particular area where they are, not based on what is currently happening where you will hardly get a South African who goes and they live in the long way for better wages or a better a, a, a salary. So Satao here uh, says, I caught it's in the document, why can't Satak sit down and come, come with one wage for Satak for those who are doing this cross-border work, regardless if you come from Zimbabwe or Zambia, and then if we come with the one salary, you will not see those ones coming to South Africa just because he will be operating from his country of origin and they know that it is the same wage. There is no discrimination. I think it will bring peace and harmony to the Satak region, close quote. This was a, a quote uh, from Satao, uh, uh, the trade union which is affiliated to Kosato. Uh, when uh, this discussion was happening in preparation for the Congress, uh, uh, met uh, uh, then met met this proposal, which which indeed, which indeed, we agree uh, with the the proposal uh, 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 as read in the quotation from Satao uh, that uh, we must have one salary of all professions in this in the Satak region. But as I've said. Uh, this will mean building our economies, linking our economies. Uh, uh, let, let, let me end by the, the uh, quote from the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. Uh, uh, um, because uh, the, the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions uh, is a sister federation to Kosato. 
So it was also consulted as part of the preparation of this ongoing conference that we are participating in. Uh, however, it was noted in one of the focus groups that collaborating with the sister unions on ensuring better working conditions in their countries would result in fewer people wanting to migrate in search of better conditions, which would impact the rate of immigration to South Africa. The need for regular meetings between sister trade unions and federations was emphasized as well by the ZCTU General Secretary, uh, who stated that, I quote, it would assist us if we continuously have regular engagements with our brothers and sisters in South Africa so that we understand their experiences with, with foreigners. And uh, we also explain the push factors that then drive the people to other side of the border. What some of the people in South Africa might not understand exactly, why do they see so many foreigners in their own land? This information is very important for us to continuously engage and share so that they can also share with us uh, their, their fears. Because that, that's, that's, that's a quote from the Secretary General of the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. Uh, uh, he is also attending uh, this, this Congress. There is a quote that he also did, which uh, I was reading the other day when I was going through the document, but uh, I did not mark it uh, because I didn't think that uh, I was going to speak to it. Uh, but uh, uh, I think I found it. Uh, it's, a, it's an int interesting quote again, uh, again from the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions. It says, I quote, uh, uh, maybe before I quote the ZCTU, let me just read first this. Uh, feminization, um, just, just uh, right. While migration has historically been seen as a male-dominated endeavor, women have increasingly been moving across borders as well, sometimes in order to join a male partner or a replace a family member who has fallen in or passed on, but often simple to seek better opportunities in another country than she is able to find at home. And the quote by the ZCTU says, I quote, poverty takes the face of young people, poverty takes the face of women. So when we want to see poverty, you look at women. That's where you will find many people that are striking. Ladies, when companies are trenching are probably the first, the people that suffer are the women. People that suffer are the young people, so they become the first ones to cross the borders to try to make a living, close quote. And, and uh, most of these women then uh, work as domestic workers in South Africa. Uh, they get abused uh, at the workplace by their bosses. They get abused in factories. Uh, they are not allowed to join trade unions. Because when they attempted to join trade unions, as this document then speaks to, uh, they are threatened with the dismissal. Uh, that's, that's the challenge that uh, uh, migrant women face uh, uh, in South Africa. So it's critical, therefore, that uh, as revolutionaries, as communists and workers, we must, all of us, work together uh, to protect all workers. Uh, the Congress of Cosato is a parliament of workers. And the workers cannot be discriminated on the basis of nationality. Uh, what we are seeing today in the broader society where right-wing formations are emerging. We have characterized them correctly that these are counter-revolutionaries. Uh, uh, it does not advance or deepen the National Democratic Revolution. 
Uh, so it's critical that uh, we reject and uh, dismiss these counter-revolutionaries uh, that have taken center stage in harassing uh, 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 in harassing workers on the basis of, of their of their nationality. My final court, because the issue that uh, is always been raised, uh, particularly uh, uh, inside the ANC and, and in the broader society, is migrants that uh, cross the border without passports. And we have said, and we continue to call on those migrants that are already working to apply for passports because people are working. But the CTU, Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions, uh, makes an, a, 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 an analysis based on the high level of poverty in rural communities, particularly in Zimbabwe. And this court, as I conclude, the issue, is an accept, uh, the issue is an acceptance that these people are going to be coming to South Africa. Our view is that we need to find a solution how we can regular, regularize the state in South Africa to expect someone who is coming from the remote areas to then expect that person to have a passport so that they are able to go to South Africa. Sometimes it's not possible for these youngsters come, coming from very poor families. And the only way they are able to sustain themselves is just to cross the border and be in South Africa. How do we make sure that when they are in South Africa, they are treated like human beings? Close quote. That's the Zimbabwe Congress of Trade Unions Court. So they are speaking to the le high level or the level of poverty in rural communities where you then have young people in Zimbabwe and of course in neighboring countries as well who will not have money to apply for a passport. In the case of Zimbabwe, the passport costs 120 US dollars. Uh, I did not check the rate. 120 might be above plus or minus. 1,700, 1,800 US dollars. Uh, we are in the Congress of Kosato. I'm rushing to the venue now. By the time you see this video, I'll be in the venue. Uh, I to record it early at my residence before I proceed to the venue. Uh, as we are discussing internationally, please share with us your views and the comments. Please subscribe to this YouTube channel. Uh, we have to build unity among us the, the workers of all nationalities, uh, be they in South Africa, they in Zimbabwe, in Nigeria, in Senegal, in Morocco, we need to build unit of the workers. Otherwise, comrades are